A lot of you gamers who've seen some of my recent gaming PC reviews have been asking me, what monitor should you get with a top tier gaming PC? We've got right here one of the most sought after gaming monitors. The latest Alienware AW3423DWF QD OLED Ultra Wide Monitor. I'm gonna take you through my experience and thorough testing and compare it to some of the others to help you decide if it's actually a good buy in this 100% honest and unbiased review. This is a 3440 by 1440 QHD QD, which I'll explain here in a sec. OLED ultra wide 34 inch gaming monitor with a 165 hertz refresh rate and a 0.1 millisecond response time with AMD FreeSync Pro technology and adaptive sync certification. Unlike other OLEDs that use an RGB plus white subpixel layout, Quantum Dot OLEDs use a top emission RGB layout. For bright white parts of an image, it will essentially turn on all three RGB subpixels. This helps it achieve a brighter peak luminance, better color, and better viewing angles. Alienware. Oh wow, so it looks like they did the stats and tests for me already. Well, there you have it, review over. All right, so what's in this black box right here? We've got a fanboy alien sticker and a safety and regulatory information. And then under that, a nice little high quality microfiber cleaning cloth. And then we've got some cables. We've got a display port, display port to USB-C, another USB cable, and then lastly, the power cable. Even the feet have a pretty sleek looking design. And then we've got this super beefy monitor arm. Wow, that is heavy. And then lastly, it looks like we've got a cable cover. Let's go ahead and lift this off the monitor. Ooh, already looking pretty slick. You can see it is in fact VESA mountable. Go ahead and attach the feet to our arm, screw it in until it's tight, and then snap it in. Well, that was pretty easy. All right, let's go ahead and pull it out. And for the grand reveal, I mean, that was kind of smart. It is a very fragile machine. That is pretty. Design-wise, there's nothing that beats Alienware monitors in my opinion. When it comes to understanding the appeal of most gamers, this one takes the cake. Unfortunately, there's only one color option, this dark side of the moon version. If you want the lunar light option, you'll need to get the non-F model, which is $300 more. And I'll explain some of the key differences between this one and that one here in a sec. Overall, it has a great sci-fi, almost aerodynamic look with a moderate balance of soft curves and chiseled accents. I read a lot of comments on other review videos and public opinion seems to point towards a glossy finish being the top choice among gamers. And while this one is glossy, because of the curve, you do get some undesirable glare in brighter environments. I do think it was a pretty nice touch though to add their animatable RGB Alienware logo and stenciled 34 on the back. Surrounding the entire backplate and circling around the monitor arm, we've got a very generous amount of ventilation. And you can see here in my thermal imaging time lapse how well it does at getting rid of excess heat. Also included is a magnetic detachable cable cover, which did a pretty great job job at redirecting all the cables straight back towards the stand to keep everything nice and clean. It's only got a pivot of 5 degrees in both directions, but a swivel of 45 degrees on both sides. A height adjustment of 110 millimeters and a tilt of 21 degrees to negative 5 degrees. If you want to do away with the stand altogether because you have your own monitor arm, you can do that as well because it is vase mountable. I'll include a link down below for Dell's monitor arm if you really want that one, but honestly $200 is way overpriced for that. You could easily find good ones at Best Buy and Amazon for half that price. Dell is probably not going to appreciate me saying this, but this highly rated one from Amazon can hold two of them for $80 less than that. Link down below for that one as well. It's overall a pretty light monitor at only 20 pounds and 13.8 pounds without the stand, so very compatible with most monitor arms. For the ports on the back, we've got one super speed USB 5 gigabits per second upstream port, two super speed USB 3.2 Gen 1s also at 5 gigabits per second, one HDMI 2.0, two display port 1.4s and an audio out port. And then underneath we've got a lit power button and your main control joystick down here in the middle. Pressing it down gives you access to the main menu for quick adjustments to the brightness and contrast. Something called alien vision with several helpful modes for gamers. This includes night mode which identifies objects more clearly in dark environments. Clear which enhances the clarity of daytime scenes by cleaning up visual artifacts. Chroma which uses dynamic heat maps to make game objects pop better against the background. And crosshair for assisting in your aiming. 
screening. Do not leave this on though. OLED screens are susceptible to burn in for things that remain consistently on screen for several years. Thankfully, Alienware and also Corsair both have some of the most generous burn in warranties that I've seen with three years of protection. And QD OLED is said to be less susceptible to burn in than other OLEDs. Then we've got a dark stabilizer with customizable levels, which adjust the brightness dynamically to help you see things better in dark scenes. And then plenty of preset modes for every possible use case, each with their own extensive amount of options. Alien effects lighting controls for your RGB logos. And then you've got your smart HDR settings with six different HDR presets for different scenarios. And this is actually a few more than what you get with the previous DW model. It's HDR 1000 mode gave me the brightest screen that I've ever seen on an OLED panel. Colors did look off and a little bit washed out though, until I went into console mode and turned on source tone mapping. Now, because this is an OLED monitor, I expected it to have excellent motion clarity and it did not disappoint. Professional gamers especially will appreciate how smooth this looks with fast paced games. I recorded the UFO test in super slow motion to show you just how incredible this motion clarity was. You can see that when we slow it down that in every major FPS test, the edges of the moving object were still razor sharp at high speeds. And in contrast, this is a newer LCD screen slowed down. A lot of motion blur and ghosting. That does not look good in fast paced games. Scrolling text was buttery smooth as well, but due to the triangle layout of the subpixel LEDs, up close it wasn't as sharp as it could have been. It's not that noticeable from about 18 inches away, but anything closer than that and you start to notice it. It kind of looks like a slight smearing chromatic aberration effect on the text. But again, you don't really notice it unless you're looking for it. Next to the latest Corsair 27 inch OLED and Xenion Flex OLED though, picture quality was nearly identical to the naked eye. The Alienware did test with a slightly better color with a higher DCI-P3 gamut coverage than the others, and it was also a bit brighter. The only panel that I was able to achieve 1000 nits with a small window was this Alienware one. It also had the brightest picture with a full white screen. And of course, all of them had super inky blacks, which led to a seemingly infinite contrast. You can see here in the dark how much better OLED looks than traditional LCD panels. The blacks just look perfect. Viewing angles were amazing on the OLEDs as well, with a great picture even at extreme angles. And that 1800R curve provided an extra level of immersion that I think most gamers will appreciate. If you have not yet played a racing game on an ultra wide curved monitor, I highly recommend it. And paired with my Logitech G923 racing wheel, I almost felt like I was in VR. And after several sessions lasting several hours and constant gaming, here's how much heat all these panel types generated next to each other. Price wise, it is expensive, $1,000 for this monitor, but compared to other higher end OLED models, it's not that bad of a deal. That 27 inch Corsair OLED that I just reviewed is the same price, but smaller, lower res, and not nearly as bright. And it has less features. I was also fortunate enough to get my hands on the new Xenion Flex OLED, and that one is not as bright as the Alienware either, but so far that has been my favorite monitor that I've ever owned. With a much more extreme adjustable 800R curve and a much larger 45 inch display. That'll run you $1,600 though, and it's not vase amountable or height adjustable. The LG version of that panel though does offer height adjustment and is vase amountable for the same price, but you are locked to that 800R curve, which honestly is the better option for those of you that aren't swayed by the flexibility of the Xenion Flex version. If you're on a budget though, then this Corsair LCD version for $450 is what I'd recommend. It's still got a super fast 165 refresh rate, HDR 400, it's super bright, and looks pretty good for an LCD gaming monitor. This Alienware is also a pretty good deal next to its previous DW version, the non-F version at $1,300. The main differences between the two other than the color and the RGB lighting are that the other version has two HDMI ports and one display port versus this new one that I'm reviewing here with two display ports and one HDMI 2.0. The two display ports are more valuable here because they're capable of higher refresh rates than HDMI 2.0 ports. Honestly, a little disappointed they did not go with HDMI 2.1 ports. This one also can downscale 4K input from consoles for sharper images. The DW does not. This newer DWF model also has the ability to upgrade the firmware. The DWF model does not. The ability to get updates is very important in my opinion. The reason the NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate DW model is more expensive than this AMD FreeSync Premium Pro F model comes down to Alienware having to pay NVIDIA for the NVIDIA G-Sync module. It used to be a necessity to have a G-Sync monitor with an NVIDIA GPU and a FreeSync monitor with an AMD GPU, but they play much nicer now and I can confirm that this worked flawlessly with an NVIDIA GPU. HDR color on the DWF model only needs one more adjustment by turning on the source tone mapping to look just as good as the DW version. That previous version with a G-Sync module also includes a fan
fan within that module, which does create some fan noise that is audible in a quiet room. This one you cannot hear. And up close, you can see that the heat it generates does get released out the vents from this monitor pretty efficiently without that extra fan. So if it were up to me, I'd go with this version over the previous DW model. You just get way more value for your money. One thing that is a little bit misleading, and I hope unintentionally, was the product images on Dell's website show a ridiculously smaller bezel than what it is in real life. The picture does not go to the edges like that. Overall, this is a pretty awesome monitor, but it's definitely not for everyone. This $1,000 OLED is for hardcore gamers, or just for people with deep pockets that need the best picture. People who can control the lighting in their room and have super fast gaming PCs that can take full advantage of that super smooth motion. You really don't want a super bright screen in a dark environment, so this screen not being as bright as its LCD counterparts is really not an issue. The pure blacks and shadow detail that are offered in this panel are absolutely incredible. This panel is mainly for gamers, not creators. Leaving anything like menus, tools, or icons consistently on screen for several years will result in burn-in. Alienware as well as Corsair both have some of the most generous burn-in warranties that I've seen for an OLED panel though, with three years of protection. But again, not really an issue for gamers or people that watch a lot of movies where things are constantly changing. Now, if you do decide to purchase this monitor or one of the others that I compared it to, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. I'd also like to personally thank all of my members for their monthly support of this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. Also make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all my latest tech and gaming PCs. Thanks for watching guys. I love you guys. God bless.